So, for these examples, our rule is going to be the following. Whenever you're multiplying binomials, think of them as if it's variables, like x plus 2, x minus 4. What would you do if they had variables in there also? It was x plus 2, x minus 4. How do you multiply those quantities? What is it? FOIL, or double distribute, right? Same thing. FOIL it out. Go ahead, Ryan. First one. So I'm going to point it out real quick while he does it. First, then we're going to do outer. Okay, so we have a 4 times a negative root 3. Minus 4 root 3. Good, we can't multiply them, so you put them together. Coming from the inner part here, positive 5 root 3. Coming from root 3 times root 3, yielding root 9, which is just 3. But it's a positive and a negative, so it's negative 3. Good. Combine like terms, right? Uh, 20 minus 9 root 3 minus 3. But do the 20 and the 3 together also. 1, uh, okay, 17 minus 1 root 3 minus 3. 20 minus 1 root 3, fine, yes, sorry. I'm like, why are you saying 1? Which we can write as? Ah, uh, 17, sorry. Part B, Joe? Uh, 3 root 2, uh, 4 root 4, which is just uh, 8, uh, and negative 18, and negative 24 root 2. The circle, how, how is it minus 1 root 2? Because it's negative 4 plus 5. No, it's positive. Thank you, Jerry. I'm having trouble here, guys. Hold on. Something is wrong with this thing. It's not, the stylus is not working. Hold on one sec, right? Let me close this program or something. Alright, I love you. Now, Jared, sorry about that. You're absolutely right. It's 17 plus radical 3. There we go. All right. It's not detecting the stylus. It's a new. Uh, you guys know there's different. So, this is a little engineering feat for you. There's different like uh, responses to different tips on these styluses. I don't know if the plural is styli, but when you, you know, when you write, um, this is a like it's supposed to write better, but it's a firmer tip, so you have to write harder, so it doesn't pick it up right away. So it's throwing me off big time. All right, Joe. Sorry. So we got three root two for the first. For outer, we have the four times the root four, which is eight. Good. Inner is minus eighteen, and last. Okay, combine like terms. Um, let's see, Putting the numerical or num the. 21 root 2. Oh no, okay, so. Um, I had 9 and 10. Yes, okay, and that, you know what I meant, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, it doesn't matter, but let's put it in like uh, integer plus irrational expression order. Third one? Who's got the third one for this? Let's give it a shot. Be careful of a common mistake that I see that occurs. Kate, why don't you take this one? Good. Somebody there? Oh, that is odd. Oh, Creepy. Well, it's not dots, but it's just the fact that we have like x plus 2, x plus 2. So the middle term is just double whatever that number is. It's that pattern we pick up on. Uh, go ahead, Kate. Okay, so you multiply two yep. Three. Is that count to like, four? Two times two is? Four. Root three times root three is? Three. So write it like that for now if you want, okay? Continue. Outer? Yeah, so then you do that comes in two, sorry. It's all right. Negative eight root um, 15. Good, keep going. Because it's squared, right? That middle term doubles always. So we could have just put this as 16. Remember that, remember that trick? And multiply these two, and then double this number. You always get the middle term there. Continue. And then um, negative 16 times 5. Oh, positive 16. 
Thank you. Okay, combine like terms. 12 minus 80 is negative 68 minus 16, root 15. Thank you, Joe. Sorry. I'm sorry? Yeah, I know. Now, I, you know, to be honest, guys, I was trying to finish a problem since last night, which I did, but it took me forever. And then I had to do the physics ones also. So I was up really late. So I'm trying my best right now to uh, stay focused. What's late for me? Um, late. Part D. 2 root 5 minus 3 root 7. 2 root 5 plus 3 root 7. Julia, yes. what do you notice when you look at this problem right away? Or what do you think about? What comes to mind? Yeah, yeah, say it. Yeah, it's dots. X plus 2, X minus 2. Agreed? That's what this is. This here is X minus 2 or Y, X plus 2 or Y. It does not matter. It's the same thing. Except we have numbers here. But with dots, what was the key? Who remembers? We'll come back to you, Julian, in a second. Right, help, or right pitch in here. When you, when you multiply two things that are a difference of squares, what does it come out to be? Like the product? Mm -hmm. uh, x minus y and x plus y. Okay, and what does the answer result in? Variably. What do you get if this was x plus y, x minus y? What would you get when you multiply? It? x squared minus y squared. x squared minus y squared. Agreed? So, the middle terms cancel. Do you remember that? It's going to happen here also. Uh -huh. Let's prove it once, and then we'll see that. Okay? So, Julia, back to you now. Step me through the process. So, first out or inner last. Okay, so, two, um, it's going to be two times five. Two root five times two root five, which is? Two times five. This, oh, sorry, four times five. Good. There it is. So, she does two times two and root five times root five, giving her four times five. Continue. And then plus six root five. So, Joe, middle terms? Julia, continue. So it's um, 20 minus 7, which is 64. Okay. What's the cool part about this problem? Why do you think I find this interesting? It doesn't have any roots. Yeah. You start with a radical expression. That can't be simplified on its own, but when multiplied by some other radical expression, it is simplified. So, what we're seeing is we have again x plus y, x minus 1, right? We call those binomial. I'm going to write this term down now. We call those, and I'll go to the next page so you can see it, conjugates. Okay? Can I get a reader for this? To read nice and loud? Chris. And I'm going to pause you at certain points. Where you go ahead. A times um, radical B is A root B. A root B minus C root D times. The quantity. The quantity of A times root B plus C times root D. Good. Which we know as dot x plus y times the quantity of x minus y. Whenever x and or y is a radical expression in this product. The result is still an integer value. The expressions a times root b minus c times root b and a times root b plus c times root d are known as binomial conjugates. Okay, so again, it's a very important topic. Hannah, do you see this in pre-calc here? Do you use them at all? Try and think back. I don't know, I was thinking of Oh, that's all right. Binomial conjugates. Look okay. at the. Yeah. You do, okay. All right. I know you use them in calculus, but I forgot whether or not you had actually got into it. Yeah, we do. Okay. So, what we're noticing is that if we want to make 
uh, radical expression no longer irrational, we multiply by its binomial conjugate. So take a look at example A. Jared, example A, that denominator is irrational, right? But we want to make them rational always, like we talked about last class. We want to rationalize. So we're going to learn and use this technique, and we're going to carry that over, because it's going to apply in calculus as well. Okay? So what might you multiply this by in the form of 1? What might that look like? Conjugate, right? Okay, so you want to do 2 plus the square root of 5 Good. over 2 plus the square root of 5. Okay, the conjugate. I know. Don't say inverse because it's not inverse. The conjugate. Why is it called binomial conjugate? Because there are two terms. Okay, two terms. So, what might you predict the denominator will now look like? Some integer value. Okay, some integer value. So, We've got the first term, which we're going to distribute to both of these. We have 6 plus 3 root 5 over. What does the denominator look like now? What do we get with the denominator? And please don't even include the middle terms, because we know they're going to cancel, right? So when I FOIL this bottom, I get 2 times 2, which is Jughead, plus what's root 5 times root 5? Yeah, but it's a minus. Yeah, sorry. So we're going to have negative root 5 and positive root 5. So I'm multiplying this times this and this times this. This is the only time that you will ever ignore the middle terms when you're foiling. When you notice that you have conjugates. If you don't... Watch. Don't you have to foil this out, Ryan? It's normally 2 times 2, which is 4. Then it's going to be 2 root 5. But then it's going to be negative 2 root 5. Those two middle terms are going to cancel, so we're ignoring them. You can only ever do that when you have an example with dots, with binomial conjugates. Okay? 4 minus 5, everybody? Which has one line, looks like? Okay. Negative 6 minus 3 root 5. How are we doing with this so far? This was one of those lessons that I know it's a little bit tough. It's not easy right away, but once you do enough of these problems, you're just going to be like, oh, this makes sense. And that's all the problems are for homework. You're just practicing, practicing, going through rationalizing denominators, or just multiplying the expressions. Just remember FOIL. Even at this point in time, if right now that didn't make sense to you to drop the middle terms and stuff, just FOIL it out, and you'll have no problem with it at all. Okay? Let's take a look at part B now. Chris, since you had a hesitant head on that last one when I asked, if you don't mind me, can you help us with this one? Conjugate, right? What does conjugate mean? It means the minus instead of the plus, or the plus instead of the minus. So then it's minus root. There you go. All right. Now, up top, here's the issue with this problem. They're not binomial conjugates, so we can't just ignore the middle term. We have to actually FOIL out the top. Because remember, watch, this is what you need to know as mathematicians is really here. This is what's really going on, okay? So in your mind, remember these parentheses. You don't have to draw them by any means. Chris, up top, FOIL that whole thing out. We got a lot to do. We'll show the bottom. We'll talk about the bottom in a minute because the middle term is going to cancel if you do it. See the 6 and the negative root 3 and the 6 and the positive root 3? Yeah. It's like getting two, plus 2x two minus 2x two as the two middle terms of the foil. They're going to drop off. We'll show. Chris, top. How do you get 24 minus 4 times root 3? This is cool. And then um, minus 6 times root 5 plus root 15. Good. So again, what is Chris doing? He's foiling. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times negative root 3 is negative 4 root 3. 6 times negative root 5 is negative 6 root 5. Negative root 5 times negative root 3 is positive root 15. Now, Chris, are there any like terms up there? Um, 
No. Unfortunately, there are no like terms up there. Okay? Do we all see that? So there's not much we can do up top. Ryan, down below. What can we do down below, Ryan? No, for you, I'm saying. Show me what we get. Because I want you to see it yourself. 36. Middle terms. So that's why when there's a binomial conjugate, like the denominator is, we can just cancel. We have 36 minus 3. Don't forget the minus. Finish it off. We have to simplify, right? Just put a 33 in the denominator? Yeah. Because it's 33, uh, 36 minus 3? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just said to finish the problem. You looked at me like it was nothing to do. It's all right. Now, what would have happened, and this is a bit, I guess, extra to think about. This is terrible, this pen. I need to get a new one. Can you do it with your fingers? Yeah, uh, it doesn't, it's not as uh, sensitive, or it's like almost like a smudge. I just got a new tip. I wanted to try it out, but I'm going to switch back to the other one. Stop it. Now, why can I not do anything here? Why can I not do anything here? Thin ice. Thin ice. If, what if this had been, let's take a look. See how these are all even except for the root 15 up top? Let's hypothetically say our answer had been this. I know it's not, but for the sake of the problem. What if that had been our answer? It's not the answer. Simplify everything by a factor of what? Two, because it's all even. That's when you can do that. So what it would become would be this. Well, minus two back three plus minus three back three one. Okay? No, you can't. Well, can't you all got to be divisible by the same thing. Everything has to. You can break them all up individually, Joe. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Like make 12 over 16. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. Three fourths minus Four. root three over eight. Minus 3 16 root 5 plus root 15 over 16. That's a mess. But I totally get what you're saying. Absolutely. Okay? All right, let's take a look at part C now. Last one and we're done. We're doing well, guys. Yeah, sure. Let's play one of the math. It's Friday. Let's play a math game. You can do homework this weekend. Just to break it up a little bit. We did that math game that time. That was not fun. I thought it was pretty fun. It was fun. Hannah, Hannah and I can play on the girls' team against the five guys and see how we do. Oh, please. I know you were a girl. Well, there's only two of them, so I thought just to help, it's unfair. There's five guys. All right, let, let's just do the problem, man. Never mind. Do I get to know what the numbers are? Uh, no. Yeah. 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 Uh, Pat, this one's all you. You got it, don't worry, come on. We'll go one step at a time here. Yeah, guys, let, let's let people think for a little here. All right. So up top, Pat, foil it out. Root 2 times root 3. No, Multiply, six, good. Six, yeah. Next. Yeah, yeah. Outer, root 2 times root 6. Maple. Good, root, right? Don't forget the root. Yeah. And we got inner. Uh, root one. Good, and I'm running out of space. Yeah, I could do that. Thank you. Really? Sometimes you can't erase things once you move the screen. It then uses them as objects. Continue. And then I get negative negative three. Good. Messy prime, right? Okay, denominator, go. Root three times root three. Which is just good. Inner term, outer term, cancel, so forget them. Just go to last. Root six times root six. 
which is just six. good. Three minus six is negative three. yep. So you're done. That whole numerator. Well, we can we can break up the numerator actually if we'd like to. We should. So let's just do that. Okay, numerator. 12 can be broken into what and what that has a perfect square. Um, uh, Good. 21, anything? 7 and 3, but are those perfect squares? No, so it's kind of pointless. 42. Um. Anything for 42? Joe? Yeah. No? Julia? 8 and 6 is 48. 8 doesn't go into 42. 8 goes into 40 and then 48. Skips it. 7 and 6 doesn't work. 3 and whatever. 3 and 14? Yeah, 3 and 14 doesn't work. 21, 2 doesn't work. Either way, it doesn't work, right? So we leave it. No big deal. The root 4 and the root 3. What does the root 4 become, Pat? Square root of 4 up here. We reduce it. becomes... I don't know why I'm writing on the crease, sorry. So we have root 6, the quantity, root 6 minus 2 root 3 plus root 21 minus root 42 all over <laughs> negative 3. Okay? You can't go any further. I can break it into each fraction, but you know what? For now, it doesn't help us, right? All right. Nice work, guys. Very nice. Any questions before I close this? Any questions about some of these problems? This will definitely be there. So this is section 6-4. The next section is the last section that will be in the test, which is 6-5. So the test is going to be 6-2, 6-3, 6-4, 6-5. The problem sets are going to be due on Thursday, not Friday, because, listen, I'm going to review on Thursday. So I want you to have all the problems done for then so you can ask questions about any of the problems that you may have had. So you need to bring a problem set that's completed on Thursday of next week. Is that clear? Okay. I know it's an extra day ahead of time, but it will help you a lot. What I want to do now is look at the problem sets real quick, and you could also see your groups. So let me import the document so we don't have to lose this.